so vpc stand for virtual private cloud i am going to create a drawing or a graphic so that you can understand it i would use a whiteboard and explain you all the concepts related to vpc and this whole thing would be available to you in your slide deck so you can refer it later should not be a problem let me bring up a whiteboard and we will get started from there okay so hopefully you can all see a interface which i'm showing now we have some initial quantity we have in aws or initial component we have is called aws region right so let me make it a little smaller and this is my aws region whatever i am doing will be hosted within aws region so we will select first aws region where we want to create a vpc do we have vpc by default present answer is yes there is a default vpc present into every region we create it just to facilitate better use of uh, services with aws customers because if you are not from networking background and before starting and creating your ec2 if you had to figure out vpc it may be a little complicated so we allow you to use a default vpc so we'll talk about that so this is my aws region what we know a region is made up of availability zone right everyone knows about that we discussed that in our previous chapter so let's say this is one of my availability zone now for sake of discussion i am only adding two there are high chances that there would be multiple availability zone present but i am only using two here just for sake of discussion so this is my aza and this one is my availability zone b and in that availability zone i would now start using networking component now first thing when you create a vpc vpc is considered as a regional construct what i mean by that whenever a vpc is created it is encompassing the whole region it is not just limited to a specific availability zone so let me make it a little smaller here so that we can uh, draw some more stuff here so yeah this is the one give me a minute let me fix it yeah so this is my availability zone when i would be creating a vpc that vpc would encompass the whole region and any availability zone within that would be part of it so what i am creating here is a vpc okay this laptop is a little slower today but hopefully everyone is still getting the idea what i created here into others brown color is what my vpc is so vpc is within a region but it is expanding across multiple availability zones as you see it now best would be that i start showing you this thing into console also so that you can relate not only the theoretical stuff but also how this actually is done into your environment so i would open console and i will get started when i have to create a vpc first thing i have to be very aware about what ip address range i want to provide because that would control how many machines can be part of it how many components can be part of it so for all of this i would be needing a uh, uh, ip address range that we call cidr classless interdomain routing now if you are not coming from networking background that may be a little difficult i'll try to explain it now let's take an example when you have a let's say there is a building in this building you are given a task that you have to provide the floor numbers and you have to provide room numbers or apartment numbers into this building right consider a big hotel now you may say hey i would start with a number let's say starting let's say one room number is 315 just give an example what does room number 315 means 315 means this is floor number 3 first digit will represent floor number 3 and last two digit would be representing what they would be present representing the room number in that particular department particular building so if i have a room number called 810 that would mean i am talking about eighth floor and on the room number 10 now the addressing scheme i have used here is a three digit So if this is a three digit number I am able to maximally address nine floors and 99 rooms in that nothing beyond it if I have to address something beyond it I would not be needing a three digit number I would be needing maybe a four digit number so if I have four digit now I say okay I will put two digit for the apart the floor number and remaining two digit I would keep for my 
apartment on the floor which means i am able to address up to 99 floor and every floor may have up to 99 apartments right hope you're getting the point now if I am talking about a building like Burj Khalifa, which has 140 floors. Obviously, this mechanism of XXXX won't work here. For that, I would be needing three digit for floor number and maybe four digit for apartment number. Hope you're getting my idea. That is what a CIDR is. So depending on the network address range you choose, you would be able to add a component and then you would be able to decide that how many of these would be network interfaces and how many IP addresses would be available. So that is called CIDR, classless internet, internet, internet domain routing. Uh, that is a way of representing your network interfaces, right? I can give you some links where you can learn more on that. So I'll put that into resources tab. You would have a better understanding on that. VPCs across AZ by default, answer is yes. It will be a little more clear, give me a minute. I'll talk about that when we reach to that point. So I'll talk about that. So right now what I have done, I have logged into console and in that console, I am going to access service. I am into Ireland if you see here and let me go ahead and access the VPC service here. So I'm opening up the VPC console. Okay, let's see that. Okay, isolated cloud resources. So when you open services, read the small lines. That would give you that, okay, what the service is all about. So this one is about isolated cloud resources and I want to create is a service there. Let's get started with that. Okay, so I'm going into VPC. To get started with VPC is very easy. You just say what IP address range you need and we would create that VPC for you. You do not get charged. A VPC creation is free. You can create subnet inside. There is no charges associated with that. So it should not be a problem. When you add component, then their charges would be coming up. That would be a easier way or that would be the way where you would be paying money for your EC2 machine or other resources. So let this VPC dashboard come in and we will get started by creating a VPC. Now, when you create a VPC that time, we automatically create some additional component for you. So we'll talk about that. Now you can launch a VPC wizard that can help you in getting all your things sorted in a graphical way. You do not have to worry about answering a lot of questions, but you learn very less because somebody at the back end is doing work for you. So for that, I would go ahead with the traditional approach. I want to start by creating a VPC first. So let me go to my VPC here. Do I have a default VPC? Answer is yes. See, this is my default VPC. I have only one VPC and now I am going to create a VPC here. Let's get started with that. I would call it PESA VPC 01. Now it says, what do you want to do? Do you want to create VPC only or VPC and subnet? Let's take it piece by piece. So only VPC. I may select a CIDR range, which is IPv4. I may have my own IP address management system. I can get IP addresses from that and I can say I need IPv6 addresses or not. So I'm keeping it simple. I'm saying, hey, I am looking to create a VPC in the range of 10 0 16. So this is the IP address range which I am allocating to VPC. And if you see name, nothing else and say create VPC done. So what I did. I have created a VPC into Ireland region and I got a IP address range associated which is 10 .0 This is my VPC IP address range. Now behind the scene, what is happening? Some additional components are getting created for you. You don't see them directly. What is happening here? You got a VPC along with that. We created a DNS setting for you. We created a DSCP setting for you. We created a default NECL network ACL for you and we created a default security group for you. You don't see it. I'll show you it in a minute, but these gets by default created. You don't have to do any efforts to get this created. Obviously, later you can decide to change them or to modify them. That's not a problem, but these things gets automatically created as soon as you say I want to create a VPC. So DNS, DSCP, default NECL, security group. These are the by default getting created for you. Why we do this? Because you do not want to waste your time in doing this nitty gritty stuff and that's why we by default create all these things, right? What is DSCP? DSCP is a way where we assign IP addresses, right? So like when when uh, when a person, when a child is, is, uh, is 
child is born right so their parents would give them a name that is what they are doing but when a computer is starting on a network maybe not the best analogy but when a computer is starting on the network then who would be giving its identification it's like ip address which is given to you which by dscp which is dynamic host configuration protocol when a machine start it announces hey i am a machine without a ip address is there someone who can give me ip address and then there would be a ip address assigned to it if you have config a dscp so to facilitate it we have created a dns dscp setting on that dns is used for name resolution so these things are by default created for you right now once this is sorted next thing is i have to then create my subnet next component we want to create a subnet now why subnet is required what we created is a vpc which is a logical isolation still it is not a place where we can connect our ec2 machine now services within vpc are limited what are the services within vpc ec2 then what else we can have another one what can be that it can be elb load balancers what else can be there we can have amazon rds running there we may have services like redshift running there maybe we can have uh, uh elastic cache services running here so that all will be inside vpc and for them they have to be connected to an ip address and sorry to a network and that network is called subnet so let me explain what subnet is when you create a subnet subnet is created like this subnet has a az specific scope subnets are not beyond availability zone whenever a subnet is created a subnet would be created like this and that would be the way to create a subnet so we may have a subnet created in aza we may have another subnet created into azb and we may have similarly more subnet coming up here like this should not be a problem at all now you may be thinking why i may have that many subnet maybe i want to put isolation so i can say hey subnet you are going to host only public resources here in azb also you would be having a public resource subnet this one is my private subnet i would host only my private devices there so that is my private devices getting there right so this is what a logical isolation i can create i'll explain that how to create it but this is logical isolation and in the subnets i have to provide a ip address range so if you look at this let's say this is a bigger pie and in that i have a ip address range which is starting from 10000/16 and now what i want to do i want to further create subnet so subnet would be created in a smaller chunks within it what i would be doing i would say okay i want to create four subnet i would divide this bigger pie into four areas and i may decide one subnet would require more ip address another subnet would require lesser ip address so this is possible so the address space of vpc is what we divide into smaller pieces that is going to be subnet so let me start by creating subnets now i would quickly create one subnet and similarly other things would follow along should not be complicated stuff so let me go to subnets here can multiple aws account reside in a single vpc answer is no vpc is created within an account but those vpc in different account can we can communicate so that case possible but no uh, account would not be able to have sorry a vpc may not be having multiple account there are ways to create shared resources but for now padmaja i would say it's not possible so i would select my besa vpc here and in that i can see what was my ip address range 100016 and i am creating one subnet i would call it public subnet i am just using these names so that it is easier for you to associate it with and then i have to select which availability zone it will be part of it is 1a there was a question that why are subnet needed we need a network interface think it is like your network switch where your physical cables is basically getting connected where your internet your ec2 machine network interfaces are connected to so vpc is just a room it is just a floor and then there you create small small cabin in which every person would be sitting and that's what your subnet is right so this is my ip cidr block i would be selecting here let's say 10000 or 1.0 sorry 1.0/24 so that is the first ip address range i have used and i can give it a name like i have given here subnet public subnet let me make it one more thing here az1 aza so i know that this subnet is public in aza and that is getting created for me and i can create a subnet 
right so subnet stays within a availability zone that's how we have created it and if i put a ip address range here this is the ip address range i have used for this particular subnet similarly i may have another subnet created let's say i call it 2024 and then i may have private subnet here and let's say i'm calling 10.0.11.0/24 and similarly i may have 10.0 12.0/24 so that's how i can have a uh, different different ip address range right once i have a subnet subnet is basically a way which is allowing us to connect our ec2 machine it is a network interface option which we are using for connecting ec2 machine so when i would then create a ec2 machine that time i would say hey which subnet you want to be part of let me go ahead and talk about that so i'm going to ec2s hopefully everyone remembers from our last discussions let's go ahead and talk about how all these ec2 machines work how many subnet can be created under one vpc logeshwaran it would depend on how much ip addresses you have consider my cidr example so cidr dictates how many total ip address you have and based on that you can further divide it into smaller smaller pieces so it would depend on what ip address range you have selected for your vpc and then how many host you want to keep on subnet based on that you would create smaller smaller pieces there so technically i believe limit is 200 but i still have to check what exact number is right so it is dictated by your need for how many machines should be part of it that will tell you how many subnet you should create within your network so i am on ec2 i have instances here i may have some instance already present but i want to show you quickly how one instance would be created and that time i would be able to select which particular vpc and subnet it would be part of okay so i am launching an instance here hopefully everyone remembers this component from our last discussion i'll talk about public and private in a minute just give me some time i would just go through this process and i'll then talk about public subnet and private subnet in a minute okay so here is my option to put a name and tag associated with that i can put a name and tag i can select whatever the settings are amazon linux and all the stuff and similarly here is my network settings see this by default it is going into default vpc as the name says but i can go ahead and say no i don't want to deploy that there i want to deploy it into besa vpc and in that besa vpc then i would be able to see if there are multiple subnet currently i have only one so now i would start adding vpcs there thanks debashish for sending that link for vpc limits so that's what we are able to see here see this and then i can dissect whether i would need also auto assign public ip address or not so those settings are there we'll talk about so hopefully now everyone is clear that we would be now able to create our ec2 machine let me use a small triangle to represent a ec2 machine so let's use a different color little different bigger size so this is one ec2 machine similarly i have a machine here i may have a machine here i may have a machine here right 